Hey guys, Lupe here with Cinemovie. There are two new movie options this week from Disney Nature called Dolphin Reef and Elephant. They're streaming on Disney Plus, so for all you subscribers, I think it's uh, worth watching this one if you're looking for a getaway to this whole coronavirus um, pandemic that is going on. Let me know in the comments below how you're doing, what city and state you're in, and I hope everything's well with you and you're staying home uh, as most public officials are recommending so we can get over this and back to the movie theaters. All right, so these nature dogs come at a really good time because they're a welcome distraction for adults and families, especially kids who need to be entertained right now because I can imagine, I don't have any kids, but I can imagine they're climbing the walls right now and I feel really bad for the parents. So I'm kind of glad I don't have kids. So anyway, and there's some lessons you can probably learn from the animal kingdom with both of these nature documentaries, Dolphin Reef and Elephant. So I'm going to start first with the one I think is the lighter of the two, Dolphin Reef. So on Dolphin Reef, we follow a juvenile, I think he's two years old, a dolphin named Echo. He's a young Polynesian um, or Pacific bottlenose dolphin. Their home is near a coral reef in the near the Polynesian islands. And this story is really cute because Echo is very much like a human child who is easily distracted and refuses to follow an adult lead. So I think a lot of kids at home will probably be able to relate to Echo because he just does not follow direction and he must learn to catch his own food and learn how to survive. And poor mom, Kumu, has an uphill battle trying to keep her calf focused on the prize when he's so easily distracted by a humpback whale and her baby calf. And also a beautiful peacock mantis shrimp. You guys got to see this creature. This creature is amazing. It looks like an animated movie, this, this creature, um, who is pretty much in charge of man maintaining the coral reef. And we also meet a lot of the other residents in the coral reef uh, near the Polynesian island. And let me tell you, it is absolutely stunning. I wouldn't even, I mean, I've watched nature, nature documentaries, especially underwater ones, but this one captures a coral reef that is so vibrant in color, rainbow-like colors. It is just amazing. And it's inhabited by all these other strange creatures and plants. And documentary shows pretty much how all these creatures and plants in this e ecosystem rely on each other to do their part. And it's really, really informative. And I think I thought, you know, I was going to watch an nature doc here at home and review it, but I was really into it. Usually I'm on the computer working and watching, but I was into it. It's really beautifully shot. And some of the camera angles they, they get and some of the um, action is really, really good. I mean, they have to be in the water for hours to capture this kind of behavior. So aside from learning about their environment, it also focuses how the dolphins interact as a pod. They basically need the pod to survive. Their predator is the orcas, surprisingly, but I guess that's why the orcas get their killer in their name, killer whales, because they're able to kill uh, whale calves and also dolphin calves. So that's kind of a sad little fact that they present in this, uh, in this documentary, but hey, that's, as we're learning, nature does what it does. And there you go. Um, so they also follow how Echo's mom is trying to teach this kid, essentially, how to survive alone. And like I mentioned, they cannot go off by themselves because they will get attacked either by a predator and apparently tiger sharks also eat dolphins. So, and they eat, and tiger sharks also eat other sharks. But that's how I guess they maintain the population in the ocean. So I should have mentioned Natalie Portman is the narrator for Dolphin Reef. And she does a really, really good job. It's a really fun narration and she gets cute when you need to be and she has like the right emotional pitch um, during certain scenes, especially during the close calls when mother and children are in danger. So she really knows how to build it up and then bring you down. So you can, you, she exhibits all the emotions that you need to help you through this um, documentary, which sometimes, you know, you have very stressful situations and then you have some really lighter moments. So Dolphin Reef, I 
recommend highly for the whole family. It's entertaining for all ages. And as I mentioned, kids will recognize themselves in Echo because he's very much like a human child. And it's funny to see how much curiosity there is in this little, this little guy that really, I want to say it pun intended, echoes what human um, children go through. So I think it's really, really inspiring. And especially, I hope it really inspires the next generation to value and protect our planet. Because like I mentioned, this coral reef is beautiful. So after watching Dolphin Reef, make it a double header and check out Disney Nature's Elephant. The title may be singular, but the new Disney Plus movie shows that it takes a village to survive the harsh environment in Africa with these elephants. Uh, the new documentary is narrated by Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, and it's pretty much dedicated to Gaia, who is the matriarch of the group, who uses her instincts and past memories to get the herd, including her one-year-old nephew, Jomo, safely to the next watering hole and back. And if humans think they have it rough, elephants, elephants put everything in perspective. So now these elephants live in the Avongo Delta in Africa, and it's time, it's that time of the season when the area dries out. And so they have to migrate across the deserts of Kalahari to the Zambezi River, where obviously, as the name suggests, there is water. So Gaia has to lead her herd across these miles and miles of desert and you never know when they're going to hit the next watering hole so apparently elephants they rely on their past memory and as they the saying goes an elephant never forgets apparently they always remember the same path where the watering holes it, were, were and they use their senses to find these watering holes because that's the only way they're going to survive across the desert and so elephant unlike dolphin reef it's kind of grim because these poor elephants, they live in such harsh climate that you don't know if they're going to make it across the desert. And along the way, they find elephant skeletons because some of them didn't make it. So it's kind of stressful, this, this Disney nature doc. I mean, it's, it's probably, I mean, there's, there's some really cute light moments, but it's kind of a little bit depressing just because, like I mentioned, the harsh climate and not knowing if i mean obviously they're going to make it this is a you know documentary on disney you don't want to give kids bad dreams forever <laughs> if these main characters die um so you know it's not going to be too bad but they obviously build up the suspense and you're on pins and needles hoping that they make it through the desert so as I mentioned, the journey is grueling. Of course, they encounter predators along the way. So even given their massive, massive size, tigers and lions, they, I mean, I knew this already, but actually seeing it action, they go after the calves. But you also see in the lighter moments, I mean, we all know, especially fans, elephant fans who watch these videos on YouTube, where literally they're rescuing other people's children from dangerous elements and here you have one Gaia who goes in to save a baby calf who's stuck in the mud and it's beautiful to watch how dedicated these uh, herds of elephants are to each other it's just really endearing they all work together as a family unit to help each other along the way so Meghan Markle the Duchess of Sussex um, provides a really soothing voice as a narrator when it's straightforward information but during the lighter moments, I had a feeling she was a little inexperienced when it came over, came to some of the voiceover work. It seemed a little bit more apparent, um, especially right after watching Dolphin Reef with Natalie Portman. I could really tell the dif big differences between the two. And not that she did a horrible job. It was just some of those lighter moments where she's trying to be a little bit of a, like a joking manner. It just didn't come off very organic. But, you know, I hate to criticize Meghan Markle, especially right now given the horrible, horrible press she received from the British tabloids that forced Prince Harry to take his family out of that environment. Who can blame him? It just goes to show you, show you humans and animals who are very much alike will go to great lengths to protect the family. And those are your two options for Disney Plus this weekend, Elephant and Dolphin Reef. I highly recommend it, especially for families. And you'll probably get your kids to sit down and pay attention since they're probably climbing the walls right now. And speaking of that, I want to say thank you to all the frontline workers right now out there risking their lives 
for everybody else, the nurses, the doctors, the delivery people, the groceries, everyone out there who still have to be um, essential in this pandemic. I want to say thank you and let's do our part by staying home. <music>